so uh, before we start our study may may i ask uh, you know uh, mr popins to lead us in prayer yeah sure thank you heavenly father thank you so much for giving us this wonderful opportunity of gathering and know you intimately and every word of your message i hope we will be able to comprehend as lay person sometimes it's easy to understand also let us practice that in our day to life day to day life as christians so today as we gather i hope that we will not have any technical glitches and then our bible study will be fruitful and um all the ones who are at home should also be benefited by this on zoom and um, i mean all of us on zoom so uh, i hopefully father this should bless us and it will give us the gift of understanding the spiritual gift at the end of it all we have something to take away which is very precious lord i utter all these words in your holy divine name amen uh, thank you so much paulin uh, for leading us uh, in prayer perhaps uh, franklin uh, you can lead us in the closing prayer okay having said that uh, we'll get into our uh, topic today uh, today we'll be discussing about uh, Uh, spiritual gifts and primarily will be focusing on uh, the nature and purpose of these uh, spiritual gifts there is a lot of confusion in the christian world in ta- especially uh, regarding the spiritual gifts and various groups have created um, based on these their understanding of uh, uh spiritual gifts in fact uh, the churches have been divided on the basis of their understanding on this uh, spiritual gifts and lot of abuse is taking place in the christian world uh, especially some leaders are controlling people some leaders are uh, uh, you know misusing the authority that god had given them and uh, uh, some of them are exploiting their own flock with their own uh, wrong conceptions of these spiritual gifts uh, for today what we will do is we will look into the nature and purpose of these spiritual gifts i believe that uh, this study would be helpful to uh, all of us so that we may be able to understand what is the biblical understanding of these spiritual gifts so that uh, we may k- keep ourselves uh, free from any kind of uh, these abuses that are taking place in a uh, yeah, around the uh, uh, christian world okay uh the word spiritual uh, gift is very common to us uh, the greek word for this is pneumaticos p n e p n e u m a t i k o s pneumaticos pneuma p n u m a means sp- uh, holy spirit spirit the word pneuma means spirit that's why study of this holy spirit is called pneumatology okay sometimes uh, people who have problem with the breathing issue they we call pneumonia breathing issue the breath the word came from the greek word pneuma pneuma means spirit attics means gifts so both words have brought together and made spiritual gifts pneumaticos okay so the word spiritual gifts so mostly is are used around the christian world but the real meaning of the word pneumaticos is not spiritual gifts but it is gifts of the spirit the moment we hear the word spiritual we get some kind of religious essence that comes in you know uh, some kind it the moment we hear the word spiritual we tend to feel so it belongs to only the people who are very much into prayer or the reading of the scripture and who are into church ministry or uh, who are into spiritual activities or religious activities that on but in reality it has nothing to do with any of those these are the gifts that are given by the holy spirit that is the very simple meaning pneumaticos means gifts of the holy spirit we can find this word spiritual gifts but uh, uh, in first corinthians chapter 12 verse 1 to 
but the true word there is gifts of the spirit we find in first corinthians 12 1 to 11 it reads now concerning the spiritual gifts brethren i do not want to be ignorant you know that you were gentiles carried away to these dumb idols however you were led therefore i make known to you that no one speaking by the spirit of god calls jesus accursed and no one can say that jesus is the lord except by the holy spirit there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit there are different uh, differences of ministries but the same lord and there are diversities of activities but it is the same god who works all in all so apostle paul speaks about spiritual gifts and he says that he doesn't want any of us to be unaware of the spiritual gifts he all he wants all of us should be aware of the spiritual gifts and we should be using he wants that we should be using those spiritual gifts for the benefit of the church and he says one interesting point that is there are various kinds of gifts but that is that's um, all these gifts that come from only one spirit that is the spirit of god and uh, the word as i said uh, uh, the spiritual gifts the the right meaning of the word is gifts of the spirit this word can be found in the in first corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 to 11 also but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one of <coughs> so, <coughs> the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one of you for the profit of all for to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit to another the word of knowledge through the spirit to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing by the same spirit to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of the spirits to another different kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues but one and the same spirit works these things distributing to each one individually as he wills so from this context we can clearly understand that all these gifts are given to us by the same spirit that is the spirit of god that's why these are called gifts of the holy spirit even uh, uh in all in, sorry primarily this is the word that has been used all over the new testament but these gifts of the holy spirit should not be confused with another gift that is gift of the holy spirit gifts of the holy spirit is different gift of the holy spirit is different gifts of the holy spirit is the listed things that we have read just now but the gift of the holy spirit is the very gift that uh, god gives us the the indwelling of the holy spirit itself we can find it in acts chapter 2 verse 8 uh, it is written that peter said to them repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of jesus christ for the remission of the sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy spirit here the holy spirit himself is the gift to us so one is the gifts that are given to us by the holy spirit and this is uh, the gift that was given to us by god which is the very gift of the holy spirit the holy spirit himself is the gift and there is another word that all that also has been used we can find it in ephesians chapter 4 verse 7 these gifts are also called grace gifts okay that is the that is the very reason uh, if you just look around the christian communities uh, we hear the word charismatics right uh, yeah everywhere people who are practicing these prophecy kind of things healing miracles uh, all these people they call themselves as charismatics so the word the, the greek word for grace is charisma charisma means grace as i told previously gifts the greek word for gifts is attics charisma plus attics they came together and they made charismatics people who practice the gifts of grace they are called charismatics so this word has been taken from the bible itself ephesians 4 verse 7 where the same spiritual gifts were uh, say were introduced to us as grace gifts but to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift from these they have taken that word
So the gift, the Holy Spirit, gifts of the Holy Spirit are called spiritual gifts, gifts of the Holy Spirit, and then gifts of uh, so grace gifts. But gift of the Holy Spirit is Holy Spirit Himself. What is the spiritual gift, or what is the gift of the gifts of the Holy Spirit? What is the definition for that? The definition for spiritual gifts is gifts of the Holy Spirit or spiritual gifts are supernatural abilities given to us by Jesus through the Holy Spirit for the edification of the church that it may reflect the glory of God. Let me repeat. The spiritual gifts or the gifts of the Spirit are the supernatural abilities that are given to us by Jesus through the Holy Spirit for the edification of the church so that the church may reflect the glory of God. So, let us look at the nature of these gifts. Okay. Number one thing about the nature of gifts is the gifts are called grace gifts. So, they are freely given. No one can earn. In Ephesians 4, 7, the Bible says, But to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. The moment we hear the word gift itself, we understand that it is not something that we earn. Right? Gift is something somebody has given to us. There is nothing that we do in order to get gift. So gifts are always given by others' uh, grace or others' uh, uh, what we we'll call favor towards us. And when these are clearly called grace gifts, we can clearly understand that these are the gifts that are given to us by God's grace and we can never earn it. So uh, sometimes we will be hearing around as you pray and you fast and pray for one week so that you may receive a particular spiritual gift. There is nothing like that. Okay. And if you pray for so long time, uh, you, you people say, you know, you need to have uh, the experience of uh, kneeling down. People say you should have experience of tears then only you will be able to receive them spiritual gifts. All those things are completely not true. If any of us are gaining or earning gifts by doing any of these religious practices, then they are not, they are no more called, <coughs> excuse me, they are no more called as gifts. If we are getting those by any of our religious activities, those are not given by gifts. Those are not given by grace. Those are something that we own by our spiritual at spiritual attitude and acts of uh, rituals or sp spiritual disciplines. So they will become our wages, but not gift. So spiritual gifts are completely freely given to any of us. Okay. So by doing any of these religious activities or giving alms or doing anything, you you will not be able to earn those gifts. So the moment. God chose you before the foundation of the world. The moment you were born into the into the into world, God has placed some spiritual gifts for you. So the first nature is these are the gifts that are freely given and we cannot earn. And number two thing, they are given according to God's wish, not according to our wish. We read in the scriptures in First Corinthians chapter twelve verse eleven, but one. And the same spirit works all things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. <coughs> so, these gifts are given according to God's will, according to the will of the Holy Spirit. It is not something that we choose. Oh, I like, uh, uh, the, I, I like to go and speak, so I will take the uh, gift of wisdom or gift of knowledge so that I, I can go and speak and mesmerize people. Or I want to get uh, more attention, so I'll, I want to go and perform miracles. So I pray for this particular gift so that I may get and get uh, attention from people. So there are a lot of people who think these are the gifts that they can choose and they have interest and they will be praying and they will be practicing all sorts of things so in order to exercise those gifts. But in reality, by doing any of those also, we are not going to gain any of these gifts. Primarily, they are given freely. And number two, they are given completely by God's will, God's wish. If God has chosen you to be a prophet, 
you will be a prophet. You will not be a miracle worker. If God chose you to be a miracle worker, you will be performing miracle. So we cannot be disappointed. Like, you know, I, I'm, my gift is only prophecy. My gift is not uh, miracle. I mean, uh, performing miracles. You know, we cannot feel disappointed about anything because it's all God's, God knows what is best for us. And he has chosen the best thing for us and he has installed the best thing for us. So nobody can, uh, you know, choose these gifts. These gifts are given by God himself. And at the same time, let me tell you, among the Christian world, it is very common these days. People come and say, I lay my hand upon you and I will uh, install the gift of prophecy upon you. Some people say, I lay my hand upon you and I will install the gift of miracle, performing miracles, gift of healing. We, lay, we should not buy any of those. No people can give any of those gifts. Only God can give those gifts. And he does according to his will. And you and I cannot change. No preacher can change. No prophet can change that. And the next thing is, these gifts are not transferable. You know, why it is not like we hear uh, in Hyderabad very much. Like, you know, people come and say, I'll put my hand upon you and I will release the spiritual gifts into you. There is nothing called releasing spiritual gift into people or imparting spiritual gifts into people. And when it is called the gifts of the spirit, Holy Spirit does that. Who these pastors or leaders are, uh, are in between? Right? When God wants to install his gift, he does it. His hands are not that short to reach people. He can install, he can, uh, he can impart his gifts into the people. So please don't believe when people say, I lay my hand and impart spiritual gifts upon you. And you may be thinking, what about Romans chapter 1, verse 11 to 12, where Apostle Paul is writing, uh, for I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. That is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. People take only first half of this statement, where it's written, I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift. But we, they don't read the second part. It is written about, it is not plural. I may impart to you some spiritual gift. It is a singular one, actually. And then he explains what this spiritual gift is. That is in verse 12. He says, that is, that I may be encouraged together with you by mutual faith. So what Apostle Paul writing in Romans chapter 1, 11 to 12 is not about he going and laying hands upon people and imparting spiritual gifts in them. But he is talking about when I come to you through our uh, fellowship, through the conversations we have, mutually we may encourage each other in our faith. That is what he is talking about. Uh, if you find time, please go through the entire chapter. You understand uh, what I'm saying would be reflected in the entire chapter. Okay. So these gifts are not transferable. So I, if God has given me the gift of prophecy, I cannot put hand on others and say, you receive that gift. Those things cannot happen. And next thing is, the gifts of God are irrevocable. Once God had given his gift, he is not going to take it back. Okay, Romans chapter 11 verse 29 says, For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Sometimes in our own spiritual walk, uh, there will be some uh, high times or there will be some low times. There will be times where we feel uh, encouraged, strong in faith in spirit but there are there will be sometimes we feel uh, you know lowly we feel so far away from god and we don't we feel spiritual dryness or sometimes it's possible like for a period of time we may be dry for a period of time we might we might not be able to pray properly as we used to be or as we used to do in such times it is very natural and common for us to feel and to think that God might have taken his gift away from me. You know, not by your sin, not by your poor religious practices or religiosity, you are going to lose your gift. 
once God has given his gift, he is not going to take it away from you. So once God gave, he gave it to you. And at the same time, we need to understand these spiritual gifts are not permanent. Okay? Kindly don't misunderstand. Just now I said, once God had given these gifts, they are with you. You are not going to lose them. At the same time, these gifts are not permanent. What I meant by that is, these gifts are here as long as the church is on the earth. These gifts are not eternal. Once we enter into the redeemed and eternal life, we don't require any of these gifts. Once we enter into the eternal life with God, we don't need anyone to tell us what God thinks. Like prophets, what they used to do, prophets used to work as the mouthpiece of God. We don't need, when we have Jesus with us directly, we can communicate to him. And once we enter into the eternal life, there will be no more sickness. So if there is no sickness, why do we need the gift of healing? When God himself is in front of us, we don't need prophecy, we don't need uh, healing, we don't need miracles. So these gifts are given to us as long as the church is on the earth. It is not for lifetime. I mean, it is not for eternity. That is what Apostle Paul have written in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 to 10. He says, love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we, we, we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, that when that which is in part will be done away. There will be a time when, when the tongues will be seized. There will be a time when prophecies will be seized. There will be a time when all these miracles will be seized. But love, love never fails. So from this we understand that the spiritual gifts are not eternal. So once God has given, he has given, he is not going to take them back. But these are not going to be with us throughout eternity because we don't require them throughout eternity. So let us look back at the uh, nature of the spiritual gifts. And uh, I mean, we'll continue that. So next one is, each one possesses at least one gift. No one can say that I don't have any, any spiritual gift. All of us, we have at least one gift. First Peter 4 verse 10 says, As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. You and I, we have received at least one gift. The problem is we don't know what gift we have received. That is the reason we feel that we have not received any gift and we don't have any. So we all have at least one gift. So we, it is our duty to find out what gift that God had given to us and then use it for the benefit of others. That's what Apostle Paul, uh, Peter said. Minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So, no, there is no one who doesn't have any gift, but everyone have at least one gift. And at the same time, no one have all gifts. There is no person who possess all gifts. And we may hear some people say, I'm possessing all the spiritual gifts. You know, there is no human who possess all gifts. That's what Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter, Corinthians chapter 12, verse 29 to 30. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? This is the question Apostle Paul says. The obvious answer is no. There is no one who possesses all spiritual gifts. That, because God knows that so God, God knows that we are the body of Christ. We need each other. And the life God in, uh, intended for us is to live in, um, you know, to live in a way where we need each other. We depend on each other. We work together. 
you know, we live so that we may live in harmony and we may work as one body. Apostle Paul also uses an analogy saying like, we all are of one body, but different organs, different body parts. The hand cannot say, I don't require, I, the hand cannot tell the leg, I don't need you. I cannot tell the ear, I don't need you. We all need each other because none of us possess all the spiritual gifts. We need one another to be strengthened. So let us look at the nature of the spiritual gifts once again. So the first one, first nature of spiritual gift is these are grace gifts. No one can earn them. They are freely given. And these are grace gifts. So, and God has given to us according to his will. We cannot choose them. These are freely given. We cannot choose them. And these are not transferable. No one can put their hand upon anybody and transfer the gift. That such things cannot happen. Okay. And these are irrevocable. Once God had given, he had given, he is not going to take them back. And then these gifts are not permanent. They are going to be there as long as the church is on the earth. And then these gifts, everyone possesses at least one gift and no one possesses all gift. This is the nature of spiritual gifts we can find in the scripture. Let us look at the purpose of these gifts. And then we will discuss about the use of the gift and uh, abuse of the gift. So what is the purpose of the gift? Apostle Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 onwards, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some to be some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. We all come. Uh, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and uh, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine <coughs> by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into Jesus. <coughs> in this passage, Apostle Paul explained the purpose of all these spiritual gifts. The first purpose we can find is these gifts are given to build up the body of Christ. Not to build our own empires, but it is to build the body of Christ. And then these gifts are given to equip the saints for the ministry. And it, these gifts are given to promote unity in the body. means to promote unity in the church, not to bring divisions. And these gifts are given to confirm to us, uh, to confirm us into the image of Jesus Christ. And these gifts are given to bring maturity in the body of Christ. And these gifts are given ultimately for the common good of all. This is the purpose of the uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Having said that, we'll move. We'll move to the next part. That is abusing the gift. How do we abuse the gifts? As I said, uh, God had given a gift to each and every one of us. We need to know properly how to use them. Right? How do we abuse? The primary way of abusing the spiritual gifts is not using them. We all are given gifts. If we don't use them, we are abusing. Okay? Second uh, Timothy chapter 1 verse 6, it says, Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift, uh, sorry, to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hand. So God has placed gifts in us. Apostle Paul says he is stirring us up uh, and he is encouraging us to use the gift. If we don't use the gift, we are misusing the gift. Second thing is attempting to use the gifts that are not imparted to us. 
when a particular gift is not given to us and we try to use that because we have we are interested in that particular gift is abusing it okay if god has not given the gift of performing miracle and but i like performing miracle and everywhere i go and i try to do some kind of action and say that uh, i'm going to perform miracles we are going to put the name of god uh, into uh, shame actually in hyderabad i know certain group of people they are very much interested in raising the dead okay these people have come together and they formed as a group and when wherever they hear about the death especially the death of any christian they want to go there and they want to pray uh, to bring them up uh, or sort of bring them back to life and none of the times those things happened okay and these gifts they work according to the will of god they won't work according to whatever we want okay these people go they pray loudly do these and that uh, and pray to god asking asking them sorry asking him to uh, bring the person from death and none of the times it happened people were laughing at them okay we should not put the name of god in it and let me tell you one particular example <coughs> and uh, uh, a friend of mine in goa uh his uh, they his wife underwent some surgeries and uh, she passed away and then she had to it is because of some medical uh, wrong treatment the hospital have given a wrong treatment because of that uh, she lost her life so because of that uh, she has to go through uh, the post mortem she was po- she underwent the post mortem she was in mortuary for 2 days and then this particular person was influenced by this kind of groups in uh, in goa and he sent texts to all the pastors and leaders to come instead of the uh, instead of for her funeral he sent invitation to everybody calling uh, calling people to come for the resurrection of her wife so for the come for the resurrection of his wife and we tried a lot trying to we tried a lot and trying to tell him no it is not going to work that way and you have to accept the reality and all but this person could not see okay his wife was dead she underwent post mortem and she was in the mortuary for two or three days and uh, what happened ultimately every all these people came and they prayed and prayed and prayed nothing happened they have to bury the body so as they buried the body especially the problem was this man he came from a, a non christian background all his relatives and all started mocking at the christians and they started mocking god so we need to know what gifts god had given and we need to use them rightly we should not practice using the gifts that are not given to us that does not mean uh, when somebody is sick and you don't have the gift of uh, performing a uh, gift of healing you should not pray for them not uh, that's not what am i trying to say when there is nobody and you can pray god will work according to his will so when there is uh, when you have people around you when somebody have gift of healing you can call that person the person can come and pray for the uh, pray for them okay and we all know uh, you know if uh, you are if you if you're not given gift of wisdom for example if you're not given the word of wisdom to you and you cannot just run into people's life and say i'm here to counsel you and we i'll give you counseling no that is the kind of things we should not be doing we should know what is our gift and we should be practicing when uh, there will be some exceptional cases when there is nobody who have a particular gift that is required in that particular place we can speech in and then uh using these gifts for the personal benefits we read in first corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 all these gifts are given for the benefit of others not for us so using these gifts for personal benefits is misusing these gifts and at last using these gifts out of love i mean without love if you use any of these gifts without love then again it is abusing the gift
we have to use the gifts that God had given us out of the love that God has poured in our hearts. And then finally, we'll see what is the right use of these gifts. Okay. Using anything according to its purpose is the right use. When it is said it is for the common good, using these gifts for the common good is the right usage of these gifts. So using these gifts for the common good is the right usage. And second thing is using these gifts in love is the right usage of these gifts. If you use any of these gifts without love, that is not going to benefit. And that's why Apostle Paul also, uh, he writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding, uh, sorry, and, and understanding all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove the mountains but not have love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to uh, feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, but have not love, it profits nothing. No matter what kind of gifts we have, if we don't have love, we have literally nothing. And if you are using any of these gifts without love, then it is for nothing. <coughs> One interesting thing I would like to ask you to, I would like to share with you and I would like to ask you to uh, look at Bible uh, where, where once when you have time, especially read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it, uh, where Apostle Paul was explaining about the spiritual gifts. And this one, it ends with this statement. Chapter 12 ends, uh, ends, with, uh, like, uh, ends with this statement. Chapter 12, verse 31. And he says, but earnest, uh, uh, earnestly desire the best gift. And yet I show you a more excellent way. He says, desire for the best gifts. And I will show you the more excellent way. And chapter 13, where he shows the most excellent excellent way. That is chapter 13, verse 13. He says, and now abide faith, hope, and love, these three. But the greatest of all these is love. The best and most uh, honorable way, excellent way of using these gifts and uh, desire and the most excellent gift Apostle Paul here, uh, Paul is talking here in 1 Corinthians, he's nothing but love. And that's why chapter 13 ends with this statement, no? Uh, faith, uh, sorry, and now abide faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these, love. Look at interestingly what he writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. He says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Chapter 12, he ends saying like, earnestly desire the best gift. And I am going to show you the excellent way. And then he said, the greatest of all these is love. And then he says, pursue love and desire for spiritual gifts. So according to Paul, the greatest and excellent spiritual gift is love. The excellent way of Pursuing these gifts is by love. The excellent way of exercising these gifts is love. The right way of exercising these gifts is love. So this is what about the nature and purpose of spiritual gifts. Uh, if you have any doubts or any questions or if you want to add anything, please feel free to do that. The floor is open for you if you want to have, if you want to add anything. You can add, or if you have any questions, you can ask. We have 15 minutes of time, so that's a very good, uh, plenty of time for us to discuss. Yes, Anu. 
Sir, uh, can you please repeat, sir? In chapter 12, uh, Paul says, desire the earned best gift. Yes. And in Paul 13, chapter 13, he outlines which is the best gift. Love. Yes. Uh, what does 40, chapter 14 say? Chapter 14, verse 1 says, uh, pursue love and desire for the spiritual gifts. <laughs> All these three in one particular context, that is about desiring the best gift. In chapter 12, there is a problem in 1 Corinthians. People were fighting. Prophecy is great or speaking of tongues, is speaking in tongues is great. So they have this problem. For them, he says, you people want to know the best gift, right? So let me show you the, the best gift. Desire for the best gift and let me show you. And then in chapter 13, he talks about love. And then he says in chapter 14, verse 1, which is right after 13, is the, uh, pursue love first, then desire for spiritual gift. Any other questions? Yes, Angu. Sanjirang. You're on mute. Uh, yes, we can hear you. Okay. So you said that uh, everyone has gifts. God has given everyone of us gifts. How do you know that you have a gift? Yeah, because uh, number one thing is the scripture says we are given a gift. Number one. The real problem here is not about finding whether I have a gift or not. The problem here is to find what gift I have. So how what can gift we do I have? There are some exercises which can help uh, to find the spiritual gifts like uh, some kind of small test will be there if you go through that and answer correctly that will help you understand what gift you have that is primary and number two thing is your spiritual gift should be confirmed by the people around you so you are given a gift because when we have taken this test also sometimes there is a possibility for us we we may answer those questions according to what we want okay instead of what we really have so there is a possibility for us to misunderstand. So when you have, where you you do the test, when you have, when you find out the gift from the test, you ask the people around you. They can tell you, yes, I understood you have these so and so qualities, and those so and so qualities are openly shown in your behavior. So there you will under your gift will be confirmed. And another way of understanding the gift is there are people in the church. Uh, some elderly people are there, wise people are there, like, you know, they can tell us because they are, they will be observing us. They can tell you, you are good at this, you are good at that. So in that way, they can tell you your gift also. So number one is you can know the gift by doing some of these exercises. Uh, if any, if, if you want, I can give you a spiritual gift inventory uh, in the WhatsApp group. In fact, uh, in the last year, uh, convention, if you remember, we gave file to everybody, right? Uh, last October. In the last October convention file, at the end, we put spiritual gift inventory. We, we asked uh, all the members who attended to go through that so that you can, you can understand what gift you have. So go through the test and talk to the people around you or talk to any leaders at the church or anybody, elderly people who are uh, all of you elderly people I know, but uh, like Pastor Dan kind of people and uh, you can ask them, they can tell you openly. So that will help. So if you want the test again, I can put it in the WhatsApp group you so you can use it. Okay. Thank you. All the gifts of God, like I just, uh, I'm answering the question from uh, the text uh, chat. All the gifts of God are not related to our intellect. You know, 
sometimes those gifts are you know god might have given the gift of compassion let me tell you gift of compassion doesn't require any intellect you don't need to have very high iq levels for that and gift to pray we don't require high iqs for that okay so the gifts of god doesn't have anything to do with iq in fact that is the very reason apostle paul writes in first corinthians chapter 1 where he says when i came to you many of you are not highly educated you know and uh, it say it says god has chosen the fools of the world to put the wise into shame so god has chosen in you know, all of us we are not great uh, intellectually and all but god has chosen us and he always does this he chose he chooses the uh, least to bring the best out of them <coughs> so god chooses the fools to put the wise into shame the world uh, world around us they say they in interviews and all they wanted to take the best in the interview so that they can get good uh, good uh, uh, what will call um, good outcome out of them but god chooses the least lost last and little and he brings the best out of them he chose fishermen you know what peter the kind of ministry peter have done we all know so the gifts of god has nothing to do with intellect and iq levels any more comments or anything you want to add uh pauline you're on mute okay yeah i repeat uh, what yeah. i was saying was uh, sometimes like uh, sanjeev rao uncle said sometimes we are not aware we don't identify our spiritual gifts so later on you know because of whatever reasons uh, you know either with the personal or your with a work whatever but at a certain stage if you have to say that spiritual gifts are not taken away but it will come sometime in the middle you know the phase maybe in your middle age maybe you know in your old age uh, is that a pattern which is um, still recognized for the good use of uh, thing does it happen that way what i mean to say it had always been there or it is not there suddenly we get this gift later on in life how do you uh, uh, explain that uh, the answer is both for some uh, by birth or by, by by birth itself some are imparted for some after a particular period of time they might have got so it is both we cannot uh, clearly say only one and but one thing i can tell for sure uh, and this this leads to very interesting question that is what is the difference between um, uh, a talent and a gift you know there are people who have talents from uh, from birth itself and we are talking about spiritual gifts also there is nothing in the world that we have received without the hand of god that we need to understand whether you call it spiritual gift or whether you call it talent all these are given to us by god is there anything we have received without god nothing all these things are given to us by god so the moment you use your gift or your talent for the benefit of others it will become the spiritual gift when you are using your talent for the benefit of others because the scripture says use these gifts for the edification of the church for the benefit of others 
when you use it according to its purpose, it is becoming the spiritual gifts. So there are some people who have by birth itself the sense of beat in the music. They know the music beat and all. By birth itself, they know it. Okay. So when once they grow and they are just using the music for themselves and others, that is just a talent. If you use the same music to help others, to for the worship of God, it can be for soothing others, you know, to comfort others, to train people. And uh, so children can learn music from them. So if you're using it for others' benefit, it becomes spiritual. And ultimately out of love, that thing cannot be negative. I mean, forget it, forgotten. Any more? So, if not, uh, if not, uh, uh, we can close with prayer. And if you have any questions or doubts, uh, you know, please feel free to text us, and we'll be willing to answer. Okay. Can I request uh, Mr. Franklin to lead us uh, in prayer, yes. so that we can close our Bible study? Precious Father, our loving Lord. Lord, we just pause, Father, at the conclusion of today's study. Thank you, Lord, for this excellent reminder of using our gifts. Thank you so much, Father. Lord, we ask, Father, that you will help each and every one of us to know our unique gifting and then to use it to bring honor and glory to you and for the edification of the body. Lord, we ask your special grace upon each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to study in peace and quietness. Thank you so much, Father. Lord, we ask your special presence be with each of us as we close. And especially, Lord, we remember our teachers, Pastor Dan and Pastor Praveen. Be with them, Lord, and we'll continue to use them Thank you so much, Father. We ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you very much for your prayer. And thank you all for joining us. And thank you. We love, we love to see you. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.